Want to learn how to become a freelance videographer? We're going to tell you how today on The Journey. In today's world, video is king. Or queen. Exactly. Everyone wants video to be part of their content creation, whether that's for their social media, their blog, or their website. Yeah, and did you know video is projected to make up almost 80% of all internet traffic this year? So no matter who you are, you have to have videography as a part of your skill set. Now there's a lot more to being a freelance videographer than just having your phone or shooting some video, right? So nowadays everyone has their phone, they can record high quality video mm -hmm. or take you know those great photos in portrait mode, but what's gonna set you apart? How are you gonna actually make money from this? So the first question is what kind of education or training do I need, right? So there's two different ways you can go with this. You know, I went to school and learned a lot about different photography, videography, those type of skills. So that's one route you can take, mm -hmm. or you can take a different route where, you know, you don't necessarily have to go to college and get a degree in that. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different other options you can do. I know you kind of dabble in videography. A bit. So whenever you were first starting out, you know, it wasn't through a college degree where you learned those types of things. Mm -hmm. How did you really teach yourself the different tips and tricks. Yeah, I think it was a, a combination. Uh, I really like to get like just hands on it and just try and, and figure things out. Failed a lot, but then also looking at what other people are doing, especially with those courses. Like I took a couple on Udemy and then I followed a couple people on YouTube that really helped out a lot. Peter McKinnon being one of them. He's a pretty famous YouTuber in the, the video sphere and he has like incredibly quality videos where he, just explains his processes or teaches you different things. And it's helped me out a lot, especially with my transitions and just creating different B-roll uh, footage and creating the videos themselves. Love a good transition. Yep. Um, but I think that the main thing here is just getting that hands-on practice. So however you learn the basics, really you're not gonna truly get it until mm. you get out there, you start practicing, shooting different videos, things like that. That's the best way you're gonna learn how. All right, another question that you need to ask yourself when becoming that freelance videographer is, what equipment should we be using? Yeah, you know, at the very least, of course, you need that high quality video camera, obviously, but what else do you need? Yeah, so I think it's going to vary. There are lots and lots of things you can buy when it comes to videography and camera and equipment and accessories. The list go on and on and on. But just starting out, you really want to go with the basics. You don't need thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment to be a freelance videographer. I know there are plenty of people that do videography gigs with their phone or some pretty basic beginner cameras. I know with me just starting out, this is more of a, a hobby, but I have uh, a couple things here. Uh, I have a little cheapo tripod I think I got for like 20 bucks, just something to prop it up. Mm -hmm. and. It's really have, lightweight, easy yeah. to take along with you. That's why I got it. It's one of the travel ones. And I just throw my backpack and it's good to go. Uh, and then I got a beginner camera, just a Rebel T7i. It was, it was pretty inexpensive compared to a lot of other cameras. It's pretty good quality. Uh, you're gonna need some type of mic. You can either go a couple of different routes. You can go maybe like a, a lavalier mic yep. where it's hooked up. I know being a reporter, you might've yeah. had a ton of those. And nowadays they actually have lavalier mics that attach to your phone. So if you're Perfect. recording video on your phone, obviously the audio is not gonna be great through your phone. So that's a lot better for like interviews or mm -hmm. things like that where you wanna get better, actual better quality audio. And then on top of my camera here, I have what's called a shotgun mic. This is really important when you're just doing a footage on the go or out and about. It's very directionally focused. So it's gonna capture the audio right in front and hopefully not all the background noise and accessories that might be going on. Uh, and then moving on to lenses. Lenses, probably going to be the most expensive part of being a videographer. Lenses can get pretty costly with just how many different variations there are and how many different things and focal lenses and apertures, all these things get confusing and most importantly expensive. Uh, I have on here just a Canon 28 millimeter prime lens. Now there are a couple different lenses that you can get. Uh, they're starting with the, just the standard zoom lens. That's what most people get. You can zoom in and out on your, your subject, move it around, make it nice and easy. And then I have a prime lens on mine. These are a little bit more crystal clear and have a bit better of a quality. But the downfall is I have to get up if I wanna zoom in and it's right in your face and it might not be the best in most situations. So check out those lenses. You 
don't have to spend a fortune. Sometimes just the standard kit lens would work for you if you're just starting out. And two more really important things that you should definitely get backup batteries and backup SD cards or memory cards. Because just in case. There is nothing worse than getting to a shoot and you're ready to go and you realize that your battery's about to die or you don't have enough memory to record anything. Yep. And my battery's actually dead. This is the dead camera. Not prepared. <laughs> Not prepared. Another important thing to have is that great lighting, right? Mm -hmm. As Lizzo said, you need that bomb lighting. So one of the ways that you can do that, even without purchasing any equipment, is getting that natural sunlight in. So if you go in front of a window, that way the light is coming in on you. You get that really great lighting that looks amazing. You know, YouTubers who do makeup tutorials, they know all about that. You mm. gotta have the great lighting to really make you stand out. Yeah, the more natural light you can get, the better. And now if maybe you're in a dungeon that does not have any windows, you're gonna need some lighting equipment. There are ring lights that are pretty cool, especially if it's just face shots that you're doing. Yeah, and there's also soft boxes that you can get. There's plenty of kits that you can probably get on Amazon for relatively cheap or at your local camera shop. And then they're like 10 bucks, those clamp lights from hardware stores. Super inexpensive way to get some awesome lighting. Uh, the more lighting that you can get that isn't harsh and just overpowering, the better. You don't want just a dark shot. And now if you're outside and you get that bit of lens flare in your camera, the sun's directly mm -hmm. on there. Uh, what's another thing you get that's pretty inexpensive is just a lens hood. They're pretty cheap on Amazon or your local camera shop. Just goes right on the end of the lens and it blocks that sun. So as Neely mentioned earlier, you know, start out with the basics, yep. you know, and then once you're growing, you're making a little bit more money, you can splurge on some of the really cool things to set you apart. So I know whenever someone uses a drone and gets that aerial footage, like that is such a wow factor and really makes your videos stand out. Like whether that's, you know, a travel video or like wedding videos, they tend to use that. Even real estate agents and like home inspection, now they're using, you know, these drones to help get that full aerial area coverage. Mm -hmm. And so you never know. I mean, there's a lot of money that could be made just by knowing how to operate and use a drone. Now, the next question, like really once you're getting used to filming and editing and putting it all together is how do you really break into the field? And I think you can do that a couple different ways. Now, if you want to shoot weddings, maybe you'll go to different weddings and shoot for free or find different people that are already shooting and ask to just shadow them and shoot some videos and give them from some free shots. Or maybe you want to go to like a public speaking event or a conference and just film and then provide it to them for free and even add it to your own portfolio. It's going to take a lot of what I call sweat equity is just giving yourself away for free, but building up your portfolio so you can get those bigger fish. Yeah, so start out with networking and then move on to, you know, it, honestly, you're probably gonna have to either volunteer your services or offer them for really cheap. So you can reach out to people that you know, your friends, family, who may need these services just to get started, get that hands-on experience. Or you could even offer to trade your services. So, I mean, say an accountant is wanting some video of him, mm -hmm. you could offer that and in exchange, he does your taxes for you. It's a win-win. All right, so the next step to becoming a freelance videographer is branding yourself. I mean, you've already gotten your feet wet, you're ready to go. I mean, you could just use your name, but that's boring. You know, create this brand for yourself and your identity, right? So mm -hmm. some things to think about would be like, what's your niche audience gonna be, right? What type of videos are you actually going to you know, shoot? Yeah, and I think branding yourself, not only as just yourself, but as a, a company, really adds like a next level of professionalism and the legitimacy for your business, and for your brand. Yeah, and there are a lot of different elements that go into your branding, right? So you wanna start out with your website, mm -hmm. right? That's one thing to think about. The next thing would be social media, right? Mm -hmm. All of these pages really work together and create your brand. And now with the website and with social media and, and your name, all these different things can house your portfolio. I know a lot of people will go and put part of their work on social media, mm -hmm. especially Instagram and YouTube, since they're very visual, video heavy social media platforms. Then your website itself, you can direct all that traffic to the website to really check out more about you and maybe even hire you. Yeah, I mean, your portfolio is really the most important part, right? Because that's what people wanna see. They wanna see what your work has been like exactly. in the past. I know some of the best ways that I've seen videographers show up, it'll, it'll be on like Facebook, right? A really popular wedding video gets shared or things along those lines. All right, our last question, and this is the important one, when can I start making money? Yeah, it's all fun and games until you can't pay rent. 
See, the reality is you're going to have to start small, making little or no money. Remember we talked about volunteering your time mm -hmm. and building up that portfolio. Now, you never know. I mean, you could start off with a bang, be really lucky and, you know, just gain a lot of traction mm -hmm. really quickly. But, you know, most likely you're probably going to have to start out small, build that portfolio, build those clients, really spreading that word of mouth and then grow from there. Yeah. And I think you really have to go to figure out different ways to, to stand out. There are a ton of videographers out there. There's a ton of people competing for the same jobs you might be. So what can you do to stand out from the crowd? Now, one person I follow a lot is Jesse Driftwood. What really caught my attention with him, and he's, he does these crazy, just super high quality daily Instagram stories of just his life, right? Like there's different little videos. I showed you one earlier with this cool transitions and it was just him opening up a window, but he made it into like this giant scene and that really stands out versus everyone else. So if you can do something just super unique and super just amazing to watch, that's how you stand out. We really hope this helped you really understand how to break into becoming a freelance videographer and just most importantly, get you inspired. Make sure you like this video, add a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell so that you'll know whenever we upload new videos. This is The Journey, see you later.